All right, we're back here with the MLB draft content. We're just getting started. Another banger coming at you today. Yesterday, I told you the best picks from the first round. Today, I'm ranking every single pick from the first round of the MLB draft, not including the competitive balance picks. We're doing one through 30 because we do have one compensation pick for the Reds. Going to rank them from the best to the worst. And honestly, this first round was a really good first round. There weren't a lot of crazy picks, so a lot of the guys are really good. It was really hard to rank here. I got steals. I got best picks. I got worst picks. I got biggest sleepers. I got it all coming at you the next couple days here on the channel so make sure you are subscribed if you have not yet done so as well as drop a like on the video if you're loving the draft content on the channel get in the comment section down below let me know who you think the top five picks of this draft were or maybe even just your best pick and make sure you're following me on twitter and instagram at giraffe mark links in description let's start ranking these first round picks getting the ranking started at the number 30 spot i'm going with carson williams of the tampa bay rays drafted number 28th overall he's a shortstop out of high school he's got some good size i just don't see a lot of like potential just yet right now with Carson Williams looks like a really good player just not one of the higher ceiling players that were taken in the first round which is why I have him at number 30. At number 29 I have a guy who does have a high ceiling but also a very low floor in Jay Allen the second out of John Carroll High School in Florida the 30th overall pick by the Cincinnati Reds. Jay Allen's got all the physical tools that you'd want in a player but right now the power just isn't really there he hits the ball okay good athlete great glove in the outfield he's gonna stick in center field but the tools are just not yet refined enough to be one of the higher ranked players players in the draft. Coming at the number 28 spot, I got the 29th overall pick in the first round by the Los Angeles Dodgers, Maddox Bruns. Maddox Bruns actually has a pretty good upside here. Left-handed high school pitcher, throws pretty hard, has some really nice pitches, it's just the control is kind of all over the place. So right now when I'm ranking these players, yes, I'm including a little upside. Yes, I'm including a little bit right now. Put them together. I think Maddox Bruns is actually going to end up being a really nice left-handed pitcher for the Dodgers, but this first round is loaded. So he comes in at 28. At number 27, considered to be one of the biggest reaches of the draft, I've got Frank Mazzucato, seventh overall pick by the Kansas City Royals. Left-handed pitcher out of East Catholic High School in Connecticut. He really rose up draft boards this past year because he started to get some velo, but still, he's sitting in those low 90s. Left-handed pitcher, he's got some good breaking pitches. He's crafty right now, but his spin rates are really what caught scouts' eyes this season. For me, Frank Mazzucato, not a top 10 pick for me. Still a very good pitcher, just I think a little bit of a reach. Got him at 27. At number 26, the Milwaukee Brewers took Sal Fralick with the 15th overall pick pick outfielder out of Boston College. Sal Fralick to me just doesn't have a very high ceiling and I'm not crazy about low ceiling picks. Sal Fralick, good hitter out of Boston College like he puts the ball all over the place, hits for a high average, a little bit of pop but to me he reminds me a lot of Brett Gardner. Good glove, good athlete, will slap the ball around to all fields. I just don't know how much of an actual impact he's going to make on like an all-star kind of level which is why I put him at 26. At 25, a very similar player here, the number 17 overall pick by the Cincinnati Reds, Matt McLean out of UCLA. Shortstop. I had Matt McLean going inside the the top 10 to the New York Mets originally in my mock draft and not necessarily because I think McLean is a top 10 talent but because I thought he's a very safe pick you know what you're going to get out of him he's going to be solid he's going to go right into the top part of your farm system here and he might be a good trade piece at some point I don't think the ceiling on McLean is particularly high just like South Fraley but I think he does have a relatively high floor at the absolute worst he's going to be a very nice second baseman at the major league level for you all around good player number 24 I've got Max Muncie the 25th overall pick by the Oakland A's at a thousand Oaks high school a shortstop weirdly enough Max Max Muncy selected by the Oakland A's, just like the actual Max Muncy is, and they were also born on the same day. That's wild. Max Muncy's a nice little shortstop. Again, I don't know where the ceiling truly is for Max. Seems like he's going to be very good. Has a nice glove, pretty good bat to ball skills, good athlete, but nothing that really jumps off the page for you. Next up at the number 23 spot, I'm going with Jackson Merrill, shortstop out of Severna Park High School in Maryland, drafted by the Padres, number 27th overall. This is a dude that a lot of people are considering to be one of the bigger reaches of the first round, but after watching some Jackson Merrill footage, it looks like he's a really good hitter. Now, it's hard to tell with his actual high school stats because apparently his high school has a 300-foot center field, so some of the home run numbers are a little inflated. But if you watch this kid swing, he's got a really strong left-handed stroke, good front side, strong legs, uses his entire body, and he looks like he's going to stick at shortstop. So for me, I'd like to see a little bit more out of Jackson Merrill, but I don't think he's as big of a reach as some people are making it out to be. At the number 22 spot, I'm going with Chase Petty, pitcher out of Mainland Regional High School in New Jersey. Shout out, Dirty Jers. Number 26 overall by the Minnesota Twins. Chase Petty throws gas. That's why you take him. He's got an absolutely electric arm, topping over 100 miles an hour sometimes. Really nice slider, still working on a changeup and even a fourth pitch. But out of the high school pitchers, he was one of the best, and he does have an absolutely electric arm. Like I said, high school kid hitting over 100. I'm interested. The New York Yankees are coming in here with the 21st ranked player. I like Trey Sweeney out of Eastern Illinois shortstop. A lot of people are not particularly high on Trey Sweeney. He was considered one of the worst picks of the first round by many, but I don't think that's true. I'm going to give the Yankee credit here. Trey Sweeney looks like he can be a really nice 
nice player. He's a big shortstop, six foot four, 200, who swings a pretty nice bat. While he does have a big leg kick and a big hitch in his swing, those aren't things that you can't fix. People get worried that he might be a little bit home run happy. He sells out a little bit, but he raked at the college level in 2021. 14 homers, 10 doubles, 58 RBIs, a 1234 OPS. If you can do that at a college level, I think you're worth at least a shot and he can play shortstop. Big kid, very, very interesting pick by the Yankees. I really like it. Getting the top 20 started at number 20, of course. I've got Ryan Cusick, pitcher out of Wake Forest, number 24th overall by the Atlanta Braves. Ryan Cusick, just like Chase Petty previously mentioned, a dude who throws absolute chet. One of the best arms in the class, electric fastball. That's his big pitch. But unlike Petty, he has four pitches that are legitimate, a really nice curveball, good slider, and a good changeup. He just doesn't have the control that you want just now that gives you concerns that maybe he's more of a reliever than a starter. But at six foot six with his frame, I love the upside with Ryan Cusick here by the Braves. They have just have had an inability to develop pitching recently. Number 19, Gavin Williams out of East Carolina University in North Carolina, right-hand pitcher, 23rd overall by the Cleveland Indians. This dude is huge, six foot six, 238. He has got an absolutely massive frame, just like Ryan Cusick, but I like him a little bit more because he does throw hard, has that ched, and he's got a little bit more control with two plus pitches outside of his fastball being a curveball and a changeup, and he's working on a slider as a fourth pitch, which has been pretty good. He struck out a ton of batters in college. Gavin Williams is a dude we might be looking back on and saying, wow, how did we miss him? He's got the potential to be really good, especially in this Indians organization where they just seemingly make pitchers out of thin air. I love this pick by the Indians. At the number 18 spot, we're going to Chicago Cubs first round pick Jordan Wicks out of Kansas State, where they took him number 21 overall as a left-handed pitcher. Jordan Wicks, highly considered one of the better left-handed pitching prospects in the draft, has an absolutely devastating changeup. That's his number one pitch, and it complements his fastball well, which sits in the low to mid 90s. But that changeup is devastating along with a good slider, working on that curveball. He's a control pitcher, doesn't walk a lot of guys, does get strikeouts despite not having anything that jumps off the page. But like I said, that changeup is insane. Jordan Wicks, really, really good pitcher. A nice guy that the Cubs don't have to do a lot with. Reminiscent of Reed Detmers last year. At number 17, I'm not as high on this guy, but we've got Harry Ford. First round pick at the number 12 spot by the Seattle Mariners. What's interesting about Harry Ford is he's like a piece of clay. You can mold him into whatever you want. Five foot 10, 200 pounds, incredible athlete. One of the best athletes in the draft class. Right now he's at catcher. He's been playing a variety of different positions. Looks like he might stick there. While his mechanics behind the plate aren't fantastic, he still is good enough back there that you can make it work. The dude's flexible. He's got a good arm. He can swing the bat a little bit. I'm not as high on Harry Ford as some other prospect guys, but I do see something there with Harry Ford. And I think it was a really nice pick by the Mariners. Super risky, but I like that risk. At number 16, I'm going with the St. Louis Cardinals first round pick at the number 18 spot. Michael McGreevy out of UC Santa Barbara, right-hand pitcher. McGreevy's got four legitimate pitches. He's got a fastball that sits in the mid nineties and it's been hitting 96 consistently now. Good slider, good curveball, good changeup, big frame, just like a lot of these pitchers. He didn't play in the greatest conference. He played out in the big West, but he has the ability to command all four of his pitches. People are comparing him to Shane Bieber, also out of the same school. It's a pretty good comparison to me. I like that a lot. Michael McGreevy, number 16. Top 15 now. At the number 15 spot, I've got Benny Montgomery of the Colorado Rockies, who is taken at the number eight spot overall. Montgomery's got huge upside. The bat to ball skills right now are a little weak, but he's got crazy pop. He won a home run derby in perfect game, and he can run for days along with a good arm and a good glove. Something you like to see in Colorado, a guy with pop who can run around the outfield at him with Zach Veen. It's a really nice pick by the Rockies. Coming in at number 14, I got the Angels first round pick, Sam Bachman, who they took at number nine overall. Bachman had been flying up draft boards this draft season, and with good reason. He's a really good pitcher. 6'1", 235 out of the University of Miami of Ohio. Not a huge baseball school, but he ranks second in D1 in whip, fourth in hits per nine at 4.4. He had shut down stuff. His fastball's electric, hit 101 plenty of times this year with arm side run and sink, sits in the high 90s, a really, really nice slider, good changeup as well. Three solid pitches along with that plus fastball and a plus slider makes him a dangerous threat. Really good player. At number 13, this guy dropped a little bit because of Tommy John surgery, but I got Gunnar Hogland out of Ole Miss, right-handed pitcher taken by the Toronto Blue Jays, 19th overall. Hogland before Tommy John was a top right-handed pitcher in the draft, but because of the Tommy John surgery, he's going to miss some time. He's a college junior, which kind of saved him a little bit. He's not going to be too, too old, but he's not going to be able to really make his pro debut for another season. That being said, Gunnar Hogland has four pitches that are all very solid along with great control. He doesn't walk anybody, attacks the strike zone, gets a lot of swing and misses. He's been called a bigger version of Tanner Burns, who was another SEC right-hander who was taken 36th overall by the Indians last year. I like the makeup of Gunnar Hogland. I think he's a really good pick. At number 12, one of my favorite right-hand pitching prospects of the draft, Andrew Painter, taken by the Philadelphia Phillies at the number 13 spot. I don't understand why people sleep on this guy. He's six foot seven, throws effortlessly high school arm out of Calvary Christian in, in Florida. I talked about it as one of my best first round picks. I think he's a sick arm. You add him now to a farm system with Mick Abel, another big 
big right-handed pitcher with some power stuff, this is dangerous. Andrew Painter has effortless mechanic, doesn't throw the ball with a lot of violence, and still sits in those mid to high 90s with a good curveball, with a good changeup, working on that slider, good control. I'm a big Andrew Painter guy. Just outside the top 10 at number 11, I got Colson Montgomery from the Chicago White Sox, where he was taking number 22 overall. Montgomery listed as a shortstop, really more of a third baseman, but he is a good athlete. He will be a very good third baseman. Smooth left-handed swing. He's 6'4", 190 out of high school. He's a big kid. The ball flies off his bat, explodes. A little bit of topspin issue here and there, but that can be easily fixed. When he drives the baseball, it carries. I mean, this is a dude who puts up some crazy exit velos at a young age. Big Colson Montgomery fan. I thought he was going to go in the top 10. He dropped all the way to the White Sox where they got an absolute gift. Getting my top 10 started at the number 10 spot, Will Bednar of the San Francisco Giants out of Mississippi State. Fourth year sophomore, 14th overall by the Giants. You saw him dominate in the College World Series. Has arguably one of the best pitches in the draft class with that slider. Very good fastball as well. Good control. His stock rose because of the College World Series and I'm completely buying it. Will Bednar is an absolute stud. Great pick by the Giants. At the number nine spot, I'm going with Colton Kowser out of Sam Houston State. Outfielder who's taken by the Orioles, fifth overall. A little bit of a reach, but not so much. I like to compare Colton Kowser to a Christian Yelich type. Good athlete, can run for days, pretty good glove, probably sticks in center, but maybe a little bit more of a corner guy with a better glove out there. And he just hits the ball to all fields. He showed power this year at Sam Houston State. A lot of people don't know him because he's playing at a smaller school, but Colton Kowser's a good ball player. For my eighth best player of the first round in the MLB draft, I'm going with Khalil Watson, who was taken 16th overall by the Miami Marlins. An absolute steal. This guy was ranked as high as a top five player by many scouts. While he is a little bit undersized at five foot nine, his swing might be one of the best of the entire class. Smooth left-handed stroke that just absolutely crushes baseballs. He's a high school kid shortstop, maybe second base because of the size, but I don't see it. What I see in Khalil Watson is a really, really good young player who the Marlins got for an absolute steal at 16. Next up at the number seven spot, I'm going with Brady House out of Winderboro High School in Georgia, taken by the Nationals at number 11 overall. Six foot four, 215. This dude is quite literally built like a house. One of the strongest kids in the entire draft. When he hits the baseball, it goes really, really far, and he's probably going to stick at shortstop because he's a good athlete. Some swing and miss issues here and there, but that's expected with a young kid. The guts on him, though, it's scary good. I like Brady House a lot. And then just missing out on the top five, coming in at number six, I got Kamar Rocker, who was taken at the number 10 overall spot by my New York Mets out of Vanderbilt, right-handed pitcher. Kamar, six foot five, 245, and was considered widely to be a generational talent, number one overall pick before the year started, and if not, number two to Jack Leiter, who we'll talk about later, and he dropped all the way to 10. While he did struggle later in the season, you can maybe count that to fatigue and kind of missing an entire 2020, he still has an electric fastball, great slider, really good curveball, good changeup, he's a really good pitching prospect. Don't let his fall and his like sad end to the 2021 season shake you. Kamar Rocker is still sick. At number five, I'm going with the number one overall pick of the entire draft, Henry Davis, catcher out of Louisville by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Extremely good. He's top five. The Pirates took my number one to stay under slot value a little bit. They got aggressive with some later picks, which we'll talk about in another video. Henry Davis, cannon of an arm. One of the best catching arms we've seen in a long time. And he mashes baseballs. I mean, this dude's got crazy power. Hits to all fields. A little bit of a weird stance, but it doesn't matter because when you break it down, once he makes contact with the baseball, it looks like any great hitter. The dude mashes. And he's going to be a catcher for a long time because that arm is sick. He threw out 34% of would-be base dealers in his first two college seasons. That's gross. At the number four spot, my favorite arm out of high school, Jackson Job, who's taken number three overall by the Detroit Tigers. Tigers fans, be happy. Jackson Job is sick. Fastball that sits in the mid to high 90s. He's got a slider that would probably be the best slider in Major League Baseball right now in terms of RPM. It's well above 3,000. Really good curveball, really good changeup. Four legit pitches, three of which are plus, and that curveball is a great fourth option. He's so good. Jackson Job is so sick. Like, there are people who are upset with this. The fact that you got him at three is a steal. And any other draft, he probably could have been a competitive pick for number one. Jackson Job's that good. Number three, I'm going with Jordan Lawler, shortstop out of Jesuit Prep in Texas, taken by the Arizona Diamondbacks, number six overall. Been drawing comparisons to Carlos Correa, Bobby Witt Jr., two guys who, well, have incredible talent and upside here. Jordan Lawler, I can't believe he dropped all the way to six. He's a really good player. Good glove, will stick at shortstop, good athlete, hits the ball to all fields, got pop in that bat. When you're being compared to Carlos Correa and Bobby Witt Jr., you're doing something right. Great pick by the Diamondbacks. At the number two, two spot, just missing out the best player in the first round. I'm going with Marcelo Meyer, who many had as the number one player. I got him at number two. He drew a lot of comparisons to Corey Seager. He dropped all the way to four to the Boston Red Sox, which is a gift for them. A great consolation prize for not getting Jack Leiter. Meyer can hit. He can field. He's got pop. He's got a good arm. He's an all around great player. Again, drawing comparisons to Corey Seager, who many consider to be one of the best shortstops in the league at the major league level. Uh, yes, the Red Sox fans should be pumped. This is going to be a guy who is going to be a franchise player. And then Walker Bueller, a Cy Young candidate. Roy Oswalt was a Cy Young candidate. Borderline Hall of Fame
Fame talent. Leiter's got a 70 grade fastball, 60 grade curveball, 55 slider, 55 changeup. The biggest concern with him is his size, but miss me with that. Get out of here. Jack Leiter's sick. If you watch this guy pitch at any moment, he dominates batters. He attacks the strike zone, makes people look foolish. He struck out 179 batters in 110 innings. Unbelievable. He's so good. He's so good. Jack Leiter, the best player in this draft class, hands down. So that's my ranking for every single pick of the first round of the MLB draft this season, 2021 year. Of course, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think I was right? Do you think I was wrong? Who got screwed over? Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the draft content coming at you over the next few days. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Giraffeneck. Mark links in the description. And that's where I'm wrapping up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Bye.